This is our new Project Rally car, and this is the wheel and tire setup that came on it. Very basic. As you may or may not know, we just bought this bone stock, beautiful BMW E36, and we've been modifying it into our own DIY rally car. So we're gonna be doing a bunch of rally-inspired modifications to this car uh, to hopefully make it better at rally stuff. And along the way, we'll be determining whether or not the modifications have been worth all of our time and our money. So today's the day that we're gonna upgrade our wheels and tires, not only to hopefully be a little bit better in the dirt, but hopefully it'll look a little cooler too. I'm Zach and this is Money Pit. Let's do some wheel and tire stuff. Huge thanks to eBay Motors for sponsoring today's video. Now listen, eBay isn't invested in purchasing cars like a dealer. Instead, they're invested in making sales that are honest and trustworthy. One of the many ways they're doing that is by offering a vehicle protection program on purchased cars that are less than 10 years old. Think of it like eBay protection that guarantees the car you bought is the exact one that you're getting. And with features like eBay's Fitment matching you with the exact part you need to having the ability to send out licensed, trained inspectors to validate the seller's description, eBay puts the trust in shopping online. Shop with confidence today by going to the link in the description below. Now, let's get back to shoveling money into this pit. So when we took this thing to the desert, these are the wheels and tires that we were driving on. And to be perfectly honest, they did pretty well. I mean, they gave me a decent amount of grip. It didn't feel like I was completely on ice, but I do think that we can certainly do better than these tires. So today we're actually gonna take a look at three different tires because I couldn't make up my dang mind. And then we're gonna go back to the desert and see if they actually are any better. I think they will be. Hey, I'm gonna keep this quick so you can get back to the video, but there's only a couple days left. To get the launch edition of our brand new collectible Stocky. Stocky is a first of its kind designer collectible, the ultimate gift for a car nerd and an officially licensed Acura product. We're launching this in a bunch of sick different colorways. Phoenix yellow, primer gray, glow in the dark, translucent. Just like everything at Donut, we wouldn't be here without you. We're so stoked to share this with you. Click the link in the description. There's only a couple more days left in the campaign. Now enjoy your car video. Let's talk about the reason I bought more than one set of tires. So first off, of course, there are specific rally tires built for doing rally stuff in the gravel. They are hard to find, they're super expensive, and if you do get a set, well, if you go to a rally race, they may put you in a rally tire only class, which means that you'd be up against only the hardest of hard. And that's not really what I'm looking for. And I also wanna be a little bit budgety about this. So, without going with a rally tire, what do you do? Well, there's a few answers and no general consensus. Some people say any old tire. Some people say truck tire. Some people say snow tire. So I bought all three. Let's take a look at them. Firstly, I've got a truck tire and I put it on the stock 15s. So this is gonna be our most budget setup. Even though this is actually the most expensive tire I bought. These tires are about 143 bucks a piece for a total of 575 for the set. But they've got a really nice, deep, luggy tread pattern. They're pretty stiff and I think they're gonna bite the dirt pretty well. All right, let's look at option number two. First, we'll talk about the wheel. These are other BMW stock wheels. These are style 16s. They're a 16 inch. So in the dirt, we're not really looking for a super wide wheel and tire setup. And I am also concerned with making things too heavy. So I'm sticking with small wheels, 16s as big as we're going. And uh, I think that this will work out pretty well. These are a little bit stronger of an offset and I think they look cool, just that standard five spoke pattern. So now let's talk about the tire. This is our snow tire option. I went with uh, Continental's Viking Contact 7. And these are only 115 bucks a piece and they kind of look like a rally tire. And I do think that that tread pattern would be really good in the dirt. The only problem that I see with snow tires, especially out here where we are in California, where it's hot, is that snow tires are made for cold weather and they're kind of soft. So I have a feeling that these might be a little bit too soft and I'm worried that they're gonna get chewed up really fast. All right, now for door number three. 
Man, I've been prowling eBay, just looking at wheels and just kind of buying stuff that I really like. And I really like these. This is an old set of Ronal R9 Pentas and they're white and they're five spoke and they're from the late 80s and I think they look sweet. Uh, they're also a fairly strong fitment in terms of offset. So fitment's gonna be a little bit tight, but I think that should look good. Uh, they're eight inches wide, so a little bit wider, but still not too wide. So I think this wheel is hopefully my favorite wheel out of the bunch. Now let's look at the tire I went with. So this is our any old tire. This is just a Yokohama Avid Ascend, and I picked it just based on the tread pattern. So Yokohama makes or did make specific gravel rally tires, and they are pretty sick. Super expensive these days. But interestingly, the tread pattern on them in some sort of cousin type of way, reminds me of this tread pattern. Uh, just in terms of the, the two kind of skinnier blocky patterns here and then these thicker meatier ones on the outside. So uh, I'm hoping that these are gonna do pretty good and last a really long time. And at $108 a piece, they're the cheapest tires here. So I'm interested to see how these tires stack up against the truck tire and the snow tire. Uh, but I think in terms of looks, they're gonna stack up just fine. So I think we're gonna test fit all these three different wheel and tire combos uh, on the car and take a look at them and dial in our coilover fitment from last week, make sure that we've got clearance, and then we'll go back to the desert and test them. All righty, now with that out of the way, we can put on a new setup. Just kidding, we're gonna do something first. So European cars, a lot of them have lug bolts like these, and they're kind of annoying. Uh, so we're gonna ditch these and replace them with studs like a normal car. So uh, we're gonna put a dab of Loctite on there and then we're gonna torque them down. These just screw into the uh, threaded hub. So I'm gonna go around and install these real quick and that'll make swapping wheels and tires a lot easier, especially when I'm in the desert, swapping out all these wheels and tires to test them. Now that we've got studs, we can use lug nuts. And again, I couldn't really decide. We're having a big debate and I really don't know which side I land on. Do we go with the standard black? Definitely safe. Do you know, nobody's gonna make fun of me there. Or do I take a little risk and go with the neochrome? Tough call. Now, I think that the only wheels that can pull off the neochrome are the Ronals. So we're gonna go with black for now. Maybe we'll pull these out at the end. All right, the first tire we're gonna put on is our Cooper Discover. This is kind of like a really small light truck tire, kind of like an all-terrain-esque. About the closest you can find in this size of a tire. Now that is a way easier way to put a wheel on. First glance, I mean, this size looks pretty good. A little beefy, a little meaty, and I think it's gonna clear all the stuff. Uh, let's put it on the ground, see how she settles. Okay, okay, we've got about what I expected here. The fitment looks about the same as before because it is, it's the same wheels. The offset's the same, the width's the same. We've just got a slightly taller tire on it now. But I don't wanna take this for granted. I'm still gonna get in the car. I wanna cycle the wheel all the way left, all the way right, make sure I clear everything in here with my steer wheels. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, plenty of room. Now we'll check the other direction. Plenty of room up front, plenty of room out back, plenty of room to travel upwards. I think the fitment of these tires on obviously our stock wheels is great. I think this might be my horse in the race in terms of budget and performance. I think these tires are possibly gonna be the best ones. Now, let's move on to the second set of wheels. I don't know. Oh shoot, it's my lucky day. These wheels didn't come with center caps, but the stock ones from the 15s fit. They're absolutely roached, but better than nothing. I kind of like that. Let's put it on the ground and see how they look down there. Ooh, baby. That Pittman is pretty good. That fitment is so good, I'm almost concerned for the fitment on the Ronals, because this is a nice little poke, tiny poke, I mean, just past flush, but like kind of just how you want it to look. The tread's still inside of the fender, so we're not gonna sling much, 
but the Renaults stick out further than these, I believe. So that may mean that they're gonna force us to use fender flares or at least roll the fenders. Who baby! We've got contact. Yep, that's just fender liner. This is plastic, so I will probably, I don't wanna cut a hole in it necessarily if I don't have to. I might have to, but if I can, I'll just hit that with a heat gun and dent it in because it seems like it can be dented in and it's barely touching the tire. Let's check the other direction. Beautiful. No problems with a left-hand turn. So the only clearance issue we have with this setup is a little bit back there. I'm gonna mark that with a Sharpie so I can't forget it. And then we'll move on to set number three. Now, time for the piece de resistance. The Renaults. I think these are gonna look good. I hope they look good. I hope they fit-ish, kinda. These are by far gonna be the most aggressive fitment. Okay. Uh, let's see what we've got. I mean, these are about the same fitment as the other BMW wheels. Maybe a touch more aggressive in the front but not bad. And I must say, I do like that white five spoke. Wow, wow. These just might work. Let's turn the wheel. Wow, same kind of area as we were touching with the BMW wheel. And I guess it's probably about as, as bad of uh, contact, but I think we're getting away with it. Let's turn the wheel the other way. I think these are gonna be just fine. I was expecting these to be a little bit tougher, but they're not. They're great. I just gotta trim a little bit or massage the fender liners a little bit, and then I think we're good. Maybe also a slight rolling of the fenders, uh, you know, just to be safe. But I think these puppies are ready to rip. So, now that we've talked about our tire options and looked at them on the car, there's really only one thing left to do, and that's get our asses back out to the desert. And we're back in the desert to do some testing. And we're gonna be testing more than one thing at once today because, well, let's face it, we've done a handful of things to the car since we were last in the desert. We went from an automatic to a manual transmission. We did some coilovers, but ultimately we're here today to test out some tires. We've got three different wheel and tire setups. Get out of here. We've got three different wheel and tire setups. You son of a bitch. I think there's a family of flies living in my hair at this point. So we've got three different wheel and tire setups that we're gonna be testing. First, we're gonna try our 40 to zero stop times, then our zero to 60 foot go times, and then we're gonna do three laps of our little made up track on each set of tires to find out which one of these tires is the best at doing dirt stuff. So the first set's already on the car. Let's do a little 40 to zero. All right, Adam, let's see how I did on the braking. Give me some data. Thank you, sir. Okay, 40 miles an hour to zero miles an hour. First time out, we hit 105 feet. Woo, okay, all right. Oh, wow, interesting, interesting. So the Yokohamas were the best at 87 feet. Uh, the Coopers came in second place at 97 feet, and the Continentals third place, a distant third place to that. I'm a little surprised. I guess uh, I guess those Yokos are better than expected. All right, now let's go see how this thing does in terms of acceleration, zero to 60 foot times. Okay, now let's find out how I did in terms of acceleration, some zero to 60 foot data. Madam, thank you, sir. Oh, what the hell? The Yokohama wins again. Second place goes to the snow tire and third place to the truck tire. Jesus, I'm getting destroyed. 
I'm pretty impressed with the Yokohama though. Just a regular street tire. Actually, you know what? Okay, before we go any further, now I don't want to backpedal too hard. I know I said that my dog in this race was the truck tires, but they were the most expensive tires. So I would be thrilled if the best tire turned out to be the cheapest, which I think was the Yokohama. It was at least significantly cheaper than the truck tire. That makes this cheaper and I'm all for it. So now that we've got this data, let's find out the real important stuff. Let's do a few laps. We're gonna do three laps a piece on each tire and however well I drive is the laps that we get. We're only doing three laps per tire setup and then we'll find out which tire sets the best time. It's kind of starting to seem like it might be the Yokohama. traction off the line to be expected ah yes Ooh, this looks like it's in way worse shape than before oh fifth no not fifth This uh, driving position, which is not good. Yeah, e brake use is much harder. Gotta go looking for it early. Ooh, we basically came to a stop there. Time for the most important data of all, the lap times, Adam. All right. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, well, first off, the news is good. We did shave a lot of seconds off our time. I think we were doing a 134 last time, and our slowest time was a 127.9. Now, these are all averages for the different tires, but the slowest tire is the Yokohama. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. But the fastest tire is the snow tire. Good Lord then the middle tire is the truck tire. Now, honestly, none of this is really what I expected, but they're all within a couple seconds of each other, and the truth is, I made a bunch of mistakes. But here's something that I've been wondering. Let's take a look and see how well these tires held up, because I've been destroying them amongst a lot of rocks today. So I have to imagine these puppies are pretty chewed up, and that comes into play. Snow tire might be the fastest tire, but if it's completely destroyed after just three laps, well, what good is it? So let's take a look. I've got three of the rear tires here, one of each. And let's see who's fared the best. First off, a look at the Yokohama. Uh, I mean, it's chewed up. It's uh, not quite as fresh as it once was. These are all brand new tires today, uh, but it doesn't look terrible. That definitely has plenty more laps in it before it's useless. Then we got the Cooper here, the truck tire. This definitely fared the best in terms of uh, how well it held up to the abuse. Um, there's a lot of life left in this. These tr this tread is really deep as well, so you can chunk it for a while before it's useless. So these, I think, probably are the toughest tires we tested today. Then we got the snow tire. 
which looks like it basically melted. Uh, doesn't look great. I mean, there's still some tread there, but the sipes have been completely torn apart. I mean, this tire is, is definitely beat up and uh, would probably be useless far before those ones were. So that's something to take into consideration too. And now granted, this is a look at using these kind of tires in the desert. It's hundred degrees out here today. If you're on mud or hell, even snow, snow tires, probably the way to go. But really, I would say at the end of the day, what I think is it doesn't really matter too much. Run whatever tire you got, whatever you can get, whatever is cheap, just get out and do some driving. And that's where you'll really pick up the most time on a lap. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how all these tires did. And I think the most important thing is to get out here and destroy some. What do you think about that? Seat time. Who'd have thought? So with that said, I think this has been a successful day in the desert. I hope you guys had fun watching us tear up some tires and make a bunch of clouds of dust. If you did, go follow me on Instagram at Zach Job and follow Donut at Donut Media. And I'll see you guys next Wednesday. No, hit the like button. Oh yeah, hit the like button. Smash that like button. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday.